Hey, welcome back. I wanted to teach you how to tune fourths and fifths next. Uh, we went over tuning unisons, most important, tuning octaves, and this is an order of priority as far as what people notice in the piano and how it goes out of tune. So the next step is tuning fourths and fifths. You know, you're, you're very familiar with the sounds of fourths and fifths. <laughs> an orchestra tune you hear plenty of fourths and fifths there but anyway I wanted to use the same area that we were using to tune octaves we tuned F3 and F4 and I want to explain I'm showing you the building blocks of tuning a piano by ear and having you practice those individual skills first tuning the different intervals and how they fit together really tuning a piano tuning the first 13 notes is, uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of like a puzzle that we're putting together. Each interval has a specific relationship. And our goal here is to tune things so that when we change keys from one to another, the quality of sound is very similar in the intervals and what we hear. We call that equal temperament. Anyway, without further delay, let me go ahead and work on tuning fourths and fifths. First, we're going to tune, I'm going to practice tuning this B flat three and C four, and so we're going to tune those using the F three and F four as if we had already tuned them. So let's go ahead and check the unisons on that, I think are good enough. We're going to check the unisons here on, uh, not the unisons, we're going to check our octave real quick on the F3, F4, see if it's where we want, because the octave has to be set well so that I can place this note and this note in between these two notes in the appropriate place. It sounds pretty good as it is. We're going to listen to the, we're going to use the check that we learned in our last video with this D flat here and this F4 and the D flat and the F3. We're gonna to listen to the beat rate that those patterns produce at this pitch level. And I do have the filter engaged so we can hear that. Ish. This one is definitely a slower rate than these two notes. I'm, I'm going to see if, if I raise this lower F3 up in pitch just a little bit and we make the difference of those two beat rates more similar, see how the octave sounds. my ear wants to put it is about where we had it. Okay, so our octave is set. The unisons are tuned. Let's tune the unisons on this F. Okay, now let's start with a fourth, okay? We're going to use a fourth is an interval that is one, two, three, four, five half steps. So here's a fourth. It's the it's the old here comes the bride. Now I'm gonna knock this purposely out of tune, and I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this to just one string, the middle string first on the B flat. Now, the reason I'm using these notes is we can use this same check frequency. It's not always that way, right? If we were tuning a different fourth, it would be a different frequency, but I've got it set to this F5. That sounds kind of busy, right? 
Let's see what happens if I knock it sharper. It's less busy. And now I'm going to continue to go sharp. There's almost no beat there. So almost a pure fourth. Now I'm going to keep going sharp. Pulse there, slow pulse being introduced. And that pulse is, is now faster. So you see what happens as the B flat is flat of a perfect fourth. The flatter you go, the more active the beats become. And also the sharper you go, the more active the beats become. When you're at a pure fourth, then the beats are, it's virtually beatless. We don't want it beatless because we're tuning equal temperament and that won't work out in all the keys. I'm just going to tell you now, a fourth in equal temperament is always wide. And that means that relative to the note we're tuning off of, so the note we're tuning here, B flat three, it's going to be a little bit sharp of pure. How sharp? It's going to be, it's going to beat at this frequency here, it's going to beat about a beat a second. And the check note that we use is the same as the octave. We're going to go down a major third from the note that we already tuned. And we're going to listen to that beat rate. Now we're going to play the test note D flat 3 and we're going to play it with B flat 3 and listen to that same frequency. So where it is now, let's listen to the fourth. It's pretty busy. That's a pretty busy sounding interval. So let's hear what the beats sound like, the difference. I'm going to play it with the B flat and then with the F. So this, this check beats very, very fast compared to this one. So what that tells me, if this, if this one beats faster than this one, that tells me that the B flat is sharp of pure. If it were to beat slower than this check here, that tells me it's going to be flat of pure. Okay, so right now we're too sharp of pure for this fourth to sound very good. That draws attention to itself, to our ear. We hear that as out of tune, right? We're used to hearing pure fourths and fifths, you know, like you might hear in an orchestra. But, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and knock this a little bit flatter. Now that is kind of active compared to our pure fourth. But let's hear the beats. I think it's still too wide. I'm going to knock the B flat three a little bit flatter. While I'm tuning, I'm going to play this interval and listen to the beats change as I tune it. You can hear that this major sixth, that's what interval these two notes are apart from each other. And this major third have a different beat rate. The sixth is faster. But it's still, it's too similar. So for equal temperament, that fourth would be too pure for us. I'm gonna bump it just a little higher. that difference. So listen to that difference again. 
It's quite a difference. Let's listen to the fourth. It's about a beat a second. You hear this kind of pulse come in after about a second. Okay, so we've tuned this fourth using a major third below the bottom note, and a, which is a major sixth below the upper note of the fourth. Now we've also tuned this F4. Let's hear how the B flat sounds with that F4. The fourths and fifths are a beautiful thing. It really helps you narrow down, you know, where things should be when you have an octave tuned and then you space your fourths and fifths in between that. It really helps you pinpoint your tuning. So let's hear how it sounds as the fifth down from this F4. Sounds really good to me. Now it's not pure, you'll notice. A fifth in equal temperament should be slightly narrow. So if you were to picture, let's picture that this B flat was able to be tuned so that it was a pure fourth and a pure fifth down, so a pure fourth up from, the, from F3, and a pure fifth down from F4. What we're doing basically is we're changing the, we're shifting the pitch of this note from pure just slightly this way, right? Just slightly sharp. So, why are we doing that again? It's because if you tune through the circle of fourths and fifths, like I said, you you would end up with what they call a comma. You'll end up with, if you tune them all pure, you'll end up at the end with one that has to be really, really out of tune. And that messes everything up in terms of having a similar quality of tuning from key to key. So anyway, so let's listen to this fifth again. Now we're, if we are listening closely, we are gonna listen to this frequency, because this is also the, the where um, where the partials from these two notes collide, okay? Now, don't get thrown off by partials. Um, you're familiar with harmonics. On a piano, we call them partials because they don't follow the mathematical harmonic series. Um, it's not double and what, what, whatever. It's, it's, they're skewed a little bit, okay? So, so we say these two notes have a coincident partial right here. You can hear that this note, has that frequency because my filter here that's 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 amplifying this frequency it can only amplify what it hears notice it has it there it doesn't have it there but it does have it on this note okay so so they're both going to produce this frequency but it's going to be if if the interval's not pure it's going to be slightly out of tune with each other now let me show you the check for a fifth. But first let me point out, a fifth is basically half as busy as a fourth in equal temperament. So let's listen to the fourth. It's got a pulse there, now listen to the fifth. It's a lot more pure, which I like, you know, I think most people, we like that close to pure sound of a fifth. We associate, it, associate that with being in tune. Now the check for a fifth. Okay, you guessed it. We're gonna use the same test note, <clears throat> this D flat three, played with the lower note of the fifth and the upper note of the fifth. Okay, so if a fourth is one, two, three, four, five half steps apart, a fifth is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half steps apart. Okay? A tritone being in between those two intervals. We have a fifth, a tritone. Oh, it's so evil. <laughs> and a fourth. Okay? All right. Now, the check for the fifth, like I said, D flat three. And we're listening up here. 
Now notice this one, this check beats faster than this one. But not much, just a little bit. And this is going to vary from piano to piano. Now, this the the difference in speed beat speed that I'm hearing on this fifth lead me to believe that on some pianos I would make that a little bit more wide, but and which would make which would calm the fourth down a little bit. It would make it beat a little bit less, right? Because if this B flat is this way of pure, then this is narrow. This is wide, and so if you move it this way, we're getting closer to pure with both intervals. But I, I like the sound of it. I think I'm going to leave it alone where it is there. I'm tuning with just two mutes, and then I'm going to tune the unison so that I could move on. But there's another way to do it. You could put a strip of felt in between each one so that you're only listening to the middle string on each note. That can simplify things when you're learning. I like to tune this way because it exercises my ability to tune the unisons really clean so that I can hear if the interval doesn't sound right, like I can tune it off the note that I just tuned, then my unisons aren't good enough. So it kind of, it helps things that way. But, so now we have that sound. This B flat is now tuned. Just to play around with this a little bit, the, the, the fifth, okay, let's say I go sharper with this B flat. Oh, no, let's say I do what I wanted to do, and I go a little bit flatter with the B flat so that the fifth is a little more pure, and so is the fourth. On some bigger pianos, I'd probably tune the fifth more like that with that much difference. It's a lot less different in the beat speed. This one's just barely faster. This one's barely slower. Let's listen to the fourth. I'm going to kind of go back where we were. For some reason, I like these three notes played together better when this fifth is a little more narrow and this fourth is a little more busy. We could argue back and forth on the comments whether or not that's correct, but I, I, I like that sound. So there, we've tuned a fourth and a fifth. Uh, the fourth check, a major third below the lower note, major sixth below the upper note, same test note for both. The fifth is a major sixth below the lower note and a major tenth below the upper note and we're always listening to the same check. So a fifth, for a fifth, the check frequency that you're listening for the beating at is an octave, one octave above the upper note of the fifth. For the fourth, it's two octaves below the lower note. That's one way you can remember it. It's just, you know, it's, it's octaves. And you get this in your fingers. You get it in your ear to where you learn the patterns. You learn where you're listening from. I, I thought my filter was going the whole time. I don't know where it cut out. So I'm going to just review for you the difference in beat speeds where we left it, where I called it good. So here's for the fifth. I'm going to play this one. So this is faster. And that one's slower. Now for the fourth, we're gonna play the two different checks.
So anyway, that's tuning force and fizz. I, 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 I hope you stick around with me to keep going on this. I know I've, I've been slow in publishing these, but I think I'm gonna accelerate things from here. I love this. When I started tuning, you know, before I had a strip mute, I, I was so excited to learn how to tune. Um, the, my mentor, he said, here, take this tuning hammer, practice tuning unisons. I begged my brother to work on his upright piano. I didn't even have a strip mute. I didn't have any mutes. I was stuffing napkins in between the strings to mute them so that I could practice tuning by ear. I was so blown away with this world of sound that was there. But thanks for joining me. Next time, we're gonna talk about tuning the relationship of thirds and sixths. Join us for that, thanks.